What's up guys and welcome back to Slice. It is a very rainy day today but we're starting a new series, it's called The Origin of Food. We'll be looking at recipes throughout different cultures, kind of looking at the stories behind it and how they came about and hopefully we can appreciate the cultures behind them as well as the food a little bit more. I really think food is one of the most interesting things about cultures because, I mean, without cameras or any news or any kind of media that showed what life was like at the time, through the stories and history of food, you can tell so much about different cultures and what they went through and the kind of history that led to these kind of foods being created. Today we're looking at the stereotype of fried chicken. In modern days it's kind of used as a sort of roll off the tongue kind of joke towards black people without knowing the history behind it. It's actually quite fascinating to know that the actual roots of fried chicken date all the way back to slavery. If you imagine back in the days of slavery they weren't really allowed to eat a lot of meat and when they were given meat it was usually just chicken which was quite a cheap and inexpensive sort of uh, meat that was farmed. Now they obviously weren't allowed the luxury of cooking in proper kitchens and so they used what they had. Uh, often it was just a cauldron filled with hot oil and they would fry that chicken. Uh, it would be a way of getting more calories into them and it was the best that they could do. Now a lot of slaves actually worked rearing chickens, butchering them and selling them for their masters and so when slavery was abolished it was a skill that they used for their own community for their benefit. Unfortunately racism of course did not die with slavery and so black people were limited into what they could sell. They couldn't sell any forms of cattle and so only chicken it was. It actually became a sort of symbol for the economic freedom because they were allowed to sort of trade this freely and it was a way for them to get off the ground uh, to build their communities stronger. Now obviously this doesn't sit well with white supremacists and so as part of their racist propaganda they used to paint pictures, uh, cartoons if you will and movie scenes of black people eating fried chicken. Obviously it's something that's eaten in the hand and so they painted that picture as something which was dirty, lowly and lazy. Unfortunately this stereotype has travelled around the world and it's been seen as a negative stereotype to this day. But it's important that we learn about these stereotypes and understand the history behind them. So next time you think of that joke to do with black people on fried chicken, don't think of this negative image that has been painted by white supremacists, but think of it as a symbol that the first African Americans that were free used as a way to build their communities and build that strength against all the oppression that they faced. With that being said, I'm going to show you guys a really simple recipe for, well, I've already done this before on my channel, but it's a Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's super simple and hopefully you guys can try that at home. So we're going to start off with the obvious ingredient, which is chicken. I'm using chicken thigh because it's got a lot more fat and can be a lot more tender than chicken breast when you fry it. We're also going to need our dry mix, which is going to consist of some all-purpose or plain flour, along with some fresh thyme, salt, black pepper, ground ginger, ground garlic, ground onion, some chili as well. You can use whatever you want, to be honest. It's kind of you know, up to you. Just whatever you've got in the cupboard, just chuck it in and I'm sure it will make something really nice. Just make sure you season it. Next up we need some buttermilk. This is going to help tenderize our chicken. I couldn't actually find some so if you're in the same position, use some of these. I know it says double on it. A lot of people think it's double cream. It's actually not. It's like 60% buttermilk with a bit of vegetable oil and stuff like that. So it's absolutely fine to use in place of buttermilk. Um, and you can just add a bit of lemon juice if you want to make it a bit more acidic to get that true buttermilk kind of effect. Also going to use some lettuce and I've made a special sauce, very simply equal parts mayo, sriracha and honey. We're also going to need some gherkins, I don't really like gherkins but trust me they really work well in this burger, you're going to love it. Finally we need some brioche burger buns, you can use any burger buns you want but brioche is just really rich and give it that extra kind of boost that you need in a kind of Popeyes chicken sandwich. Okay so starting off we're going to take our chicken and cover it in buttermilk. Now the whole purpose of this is that the buttermilk is somewhat acidic and so it's going to help tenderize and break down our chicken. When you kind of break down that protein and unravel it, when you fry it, it will give off a lot less moisture than you think and that way we'll have much more tender chicken. And I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice to the bottoms of these two sort of buttermilk substitutes and give it a mix around and make sure you mix that right in so that we can tenderize the chicken. You can leave this up to overnight or you can go ahead and use it straight away. I use it straight away to be honest, but it's probably best to just clean film, leave it in the fridge for a while, and then come back to it, it'll be so much more tender. So I've set up a small station here with some buttermilk, flour, and an empty plate. As a general rule for whenever you're trying to coat something in flour or breadcrumbs, you wanna keep one hand dry, one hand wet. And as you can see, I'm just using one hand to handle all the flour. This way you're gonna have a lot less mess. If you were to use both hands in this, you're just gonna end up with a big clump of flour and dough sort of mixture. So keeping one hand dry and one hand wet definitely helps in this situation. Just give it a little flip and cover the other side. And by the time you get to the end, you should have a plate full of floured chicken. And when the buttermilk sort of sticks to the flour that's in that bowl, it gives it that kind of flaky texture. It makes it so much better. So the more chicken that you start coating in flour, the better it will be. 
And as you can see, my hands are just so much easier to clean. And even though the table's a bit of a mess, you know, it is what it is. So we're gonna fry this in a wok using some vegetable oil. Don't use olive oil, it will just burn. Use some vegetable oil. I'm heating it to a medium high heat. If you heat it too high, the skin will go crispy, but the middle will be raw, so use a medium heat. This is gonna ensure that your chicken is cooked all the way through. And after a few minutes, you can go ahead and flip it over, just making sure that it's not overcooking. As you can see, I'm just cooking on a gentle kind of heat. And this will make sure that the chicken goes crispy and golden, but the middle will stay cooked and it won't go raw. So I'm just going to drain it and take it out to one side. And once you've got one out of the way, you can start putting a few more in. So I'm not going to overcrowd the pan, so I'm just going to make sure that I put two in at one time. If your chicken pieces are smaller, go ahead and put three or four in. Just don't overcrowd the pan, otherwise they might stick to each other. They might become, you know, the heat might drop and they might just become a bit soggy. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Okay, and that's literally it. So once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and slice up some gherkins lengthways. I don't really like gherkins, but trust me, they work. And I'm just going to sauce up some of the toasted buns. You want to do it very lightly. You don't want to over sauce it. You just want to have that light, spicy, sweet flavor that just goes through everything. And all those flavors work really nicely together. And I've taken the lettuce and I'm just going to tuck in the crunchy stalk, just so that it fits in nicely, just like that. And then go ahead and put the chicken on top, followed by the gherkins. And then we can go ahead and cut it across, giving it that amazing cross section just like that and it's so tender it's so good you're gonna absolutely love this i hope you guys learned something today please like subscribe uh, comment below what you'd like to see next time follow me on my socials at slice underscore yt and i'll see you guys next time